But, you know, talking about the Willow Project, the Stop Willow hashtag that's sort of going viral right now, Ambler Road and resource development in Alaska, and again, that political type uh, debate about, you know, resource uh, conservation versus uh, resource development in terms of non-renewable, not renewable resource. And I was talking about Ramey Smith mushing sustainably, log home building and that sort of thing yesterday. But Sarah Rasmussen, who's a former Alaskan um, state legislator, House representative, had just tweeted yesterday, you know, everyone supports the Willow Project. All the elected leaders in Alaska, as well as the federal delegation, Lisa Murkowski, Dan Sullivan, and Mary Peltoa, support this. And, you know, I, and she says everyone, you know, and, and the implication is that they're, uh, Everyone in Alaska, like Dan Sullivan made this statement, as well as Lisa Murkowski on Twitter, you know, and I question whether it's a perjurious, you know, basically a lie, the statement that, quote unquote, everyone in Alaska is only the radical environmentalists that don't support the Willow Project. Uh, you know what I mean? And it's just a lie. It's a fake statement. And then, you know, you can see it in the comments, in the tweets back to him on Twitter, where, you know, every single person, I think 99 points, there's like one person who agrees with Sullivan. Everyone else is against that tweeted into him. And there's like hundreds of them, you know, or 20, 30, 40, 50 of them against the Willow Project. And there are numerous and majority of them are, you know, Alaskan residents there who are tweeting back to him there. So clearly, you know, they're not representing their constituents. And then there's the, the tribe there in Nisquiet, the indigenous Alaskan village out there in the mayor or the, the chief or whoever that spokesperson is, has, you know, just published an article in the Washington the Hill, you know, that uh, publication down there in Washington, D.C. And, you know, clearly is speaking about the health concerns and about the impacts on the, you know, the, the animals and the biodiversity, again, is so rich and the... Uh, the ecosystem that's intact there with the different species and obviously the impacts on on the actual nature you know on the the system there the, the wilderness there that those people you know that they live with you know they have a balanced healthy relationship with you know they're not they're not there just to extract a bunch of shit send it to other places in the country in the world you know in terms of oil and then uh and then leave you know what i mean and it's a finite amount of oil down there you know in 20 years 30 years we use it all up we're going to be in the same place we are right now that's why we need to innovate and, and wait but you know the second part of that video and i've said it several times but the willow project you know if we wait 20 or 30 years to develop that project in that time we, we can we have an opportunity to come up with other solutions and to move away from fossil fuel dependency in this consumer type you know culture and society that we have in america and broadly you know internationally too you know we've got elon musk innovating you know, with Starship, we've got Elon Musk innovating, innovating with electric cars as well. And, you know, we need to we need to appreciate the fact that those big wells that were producing big up there on the North Slope in terms of oil production 20, 30 years ago are just simply not producing as much right now, the places that we've already developed up there. So, you know, when we're looking at that, we have to use that context when we're examining this potential Willow Project because if we, you know, we do do the Willow Project uh, in 20 or 30 years, we're going to be in the same position that then that we're in right now if we didn't do the willow project in other words there's a finite amount of oil there and you know we have such a high demand high, high consumption level in the united states and again broadly more internationally as well with the fossil fuels with those non-renewable resources we really have an opportunity now just to to wait to be patient and if there it becomes something where it's a real high pressure environment and we need to develop that in 20 or 30 years we can do that but in the meantime we can wait now, and, and, and during that time span, A, we can become more efficient, environmentally friendly in our processes to potentially do that in 20 or 30 years in terms of the Willow Project, A, but then B, we can also potentially position ourselves to not even have to do it by making those technology and innovation and entrepreneurship type leaps, uh, it, you know, to basically shift from the dependency that we currently have, you know, with all our automobiles and our dependency on oil as a consumer culture and society in America and, you know, more broadly and internationally as well, we can make that shift now in the next few years and begin to make that shift and just reduce our consumer habits and consumer dependencies on that stuff and, and you know, and move more towards the renewables and really truly do it. Innovate, you know, technology, entrepreneurship. We need to have the prizes. We need to have the incentives on the government level for those big tech entrepreneurs in Silicon Valley, guys like Elon Musk. We need to make it so that they can, they can create cars and that we can shift you know, shift our system, our culture, our society uh, away from that consumer.